What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So I, like many other people, travel for work. I'm not always home. I'm away from my shop. I'm away from my projects, my hobbies, whatever that may be. And in my case, it's obviously arcades, arcade one up specifically. So because I travel, I've been trying to think of creative ways to continue to make content. And then I thought, what better way to do that than with a countercade? Now I picked this one up from Walmart for 79 bucks, and even though it only has two games, I thought that was a pretty good deal. Now this is the Gen 2 version, much smaller than that first generation. Now not only does it make it more portable, which is great for me, but it also makes that 8-inch screen seem not so small. So let's take a look at this thing, and I'm going to talk about some of the modifications I have planned for it. Alright, so here we have it, the Galaga Countercade. As countercades go, it doesn't look bad. I think the, uh, the wood grain, that 40th uh, anniversary edition Pac-Man, is probably the best looking out of all of them. But this isn't bad. The side art looks good. Uh, I like the fact that it's black. It lends itself well to modifications, to, to going with a different theme. Uh, so that's going to lend itself well. If it was like a yellow or a red, it may clash with, uh, with some other ideas I have. It's kind of a blank slate. I think that um, for the most part, it's constructed really well. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy. You know, I mean, and I think at eighty dollars, it's really not that bad. You're kind of, you're you're kind of getting a pretty good deal. I mean, especially if you're into the included games. And it all functions the same way. You know, you hold down the uh, player one button, get you back to the main menu. You can select between Galaga, Galaga eighty eight, which uh, there's a pretty good graphical jump there. So, uh, so I mean, you know, it's 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 cool. I mean, for eighty bucks, it's not bad. But uh, unfortunately, the joystick only goes left and right. So this isn't a four-way or, you know, an eight-way, but uh, so that's going to be something that's gonna, just going to have to go. I am noticing a little bit of um, glare or a discoloration, not on the control panel, but on the actual screen itself. And I don't think it's the monitor. I think it's actually the the uh, the polycarbonate, the, the plexi that actually covers that. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the 8-inch the screen is, is bright. It's... Uh, it is, even even though this is the Gen 2 version, the 8-inch screen is still pretty small. I mean, it really, it really, it looks a little, you know, it should definitely be like a 10-inch screen, I think, at least. Um, you know, because that border is pretty big. And here I'm just trying to see if I can simulate this. This off-coloring that I'm getting, it's not so much the side viewing. It's actually, if you're not looking at it straight on, it's it's a little bit of a distortion. For those that aren't really familiar with these counter cades, you're not going to have a separate encoder board and then a big ribbon cable that attaches from the control panel up to the PCB. Everything comes back uh, directly to the PCB itself, so if you're trying to modify this, that is really something to consider. you got a lot of wires down there. And now with the cover off, you can see that the, uh, the monitor connection there is not that same LVDS uh, connection that we're used to with other RK1 prod products. I think the first generation uh, countercades did have the LVDS variant um, that you could sort of take a different board to and uh, and then break that out into an HDMI and then do whatever you wanted or, or an RGB. You know, I counted the pins and this is a 40 pin ribbon cable. So I actually, I ordered a board. I'm going to do a little experimentation. I'm going to let you know, thumbs up, thumbs down if it works. Uh, but if it does, it's going to break allow me to break out to a uh, to an HDMI, and then uh, of course from there you can really you can do whatever you want to. Um, you can see all the connections on the bottom, and I noticed that uh, one of the connections looks like a a charging port, like a for a USB uh, micro. And sure sure enough, it is a a micro USB connection. I just I tested that real quick with uh, with this cord uh, cord that I had, this cable, and that actually. Is good because the breakout board uh, that I, the compatibility that this breakout board that I've ordered has is with panels similar to this where you have that that capability, which I would imagine would be to charge, uh, maybe to load software, load games on. I'm not sure. Okay, now for a sneak peek at one of the other mods I have planned for this cab. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a PlayStation fanboy, I guess. That's okay. Um, I know the conventional wisdom would say to go with like a Raspberry Pi or even like a Pandora's box, 16-in-1 board, but I'm going to try to see if I can make this work. Uh, I know it's going to be tight, but if I can pull this off, it'll be pretty cool. So if you want to see how this works out, stay tuned. Okay, so there you go, my master plan, or at least a portion of it. Um, but let me know down in the comment section below if this is something you're really interested in. Does anybody have any countercades? Does anyone have any desires to own one? 
Now it is a semi-portable option, but uh, the form factor really lends itself to people who don't have a ton of space at home. Thanks for stopping by. Y'all have a blessed day, and I will see you next time.